I'm Jared Gardner, and I'm an assistant professor of pathology and dermatology at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences in Little Rock. And I'm here today with Dr. Ronald Rapini, the Chernovsky Distinguished Chair of Dermatology and also professor of pathology at University of Texas, Houston. And it's a great pleasure to have Dr. Rapini here because he's one of uh, my greatest derm path mentors and really the person that I credit probably the most with uh, making me pursue a career in academic dermatopathology. So Ron, thank you for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, tell me, how did you get involved in dermatopathology? Well, uh, I hated pathology when I was a resident. <laughs> I, well, when, I was, when I was a medical student, I hated it because it was poorly taught and I couldn't see the, what they were talking about when they projected slides. But uh, what, what really got me interested in when, when you sat behind a multi-headed scope and somebody actually points out things to you, that makes a lot of difference. And that happened during my dermatology residency and that we would have uh, conferences and they would point to things. So that made the huge difference. I got interested in Dick Zelke was one of my faculty uh, who, uh, who really got me interested in it. And, uh, and then I went to this uh, course uh, at Grossinger, New York that a, a lot of the distinguished uh, uh, Durham Path people were running the course, and I met them there. Uh, John Mays was there, and Lauren Golitz, and uh, Martin Brownstein, and they were running the course. Those three I remember vividly, uh, and I got real interested in it. Cool. And then uh, you did your fellowship training in Colorado, is that right? Right, with uh, Lauren Golitz. Uh, I was his first fellow, wow. uh, first ACGME accredited fellow, <laughs> I should say. He had a couple people before that, but they wasn't accredited then. Um, yeah, I, when I, we were feeling our way around with the new accreditation because they let me, they made me do all of the things the first year pathology residents do. Oh, wow. So I had to do a gross in a Whipple procedure and do 12 autopsies and all this. The pathologists were happy to have an, an extra, extra hand, yeah, so they, they sure. loaded all the things on me. But things have loosened up with most of the dermatology trained pathology uh, fellows now. Yeah, no, they, no autopsy yeah, requirements yeah, now right. that I'm aware of. Um, how do you? Well, you mentioned that it was sitting in a multi-headed scope that, that got you interested. And I think sitting at your multi-headed scope really I mean, made me very much interested in uh, Derm Path. And you, know, you, have, you have great skill as a teacher because not only do you know the details to point out, but you do it in a pretty funny and humorous manner, whether you intend to or not. So yeah. what, you know, what do you think it takes? How do you, how do you teach Derm Path to people? Well, my worst fear is someone, someone's going to fall asleep. You know, uh, and uh, you know, so I try to put in some, uh, some humorous things in there. Uh, you know, it's important to make it interesting. So uh, we have little quips. Uh, and we have on the hanging on the wall some some uh, some pearls that are, and I refer to those. So, you know, I have some of my mentors' pictures on the wall. And I That's refer to good. them, and I say that this person says that, and we keep it keeps coming up again and again repetitively. Tell us some uh, of your pearls. I, I know well, many of them. I like them a lot. What is well, like some of them are ridiculous. Uh, so yeah. one of them's uh, I have pictures of uh, O.J. Simpson as one of my mentors, and uh, and the president. Uh, Clinton there, uh, they each had something to teach me. But uh, I mean, uh, O.J. Simpson says the glove, if the glove doesn't fit, she, you must acquit. So in other words, the clinical and the path have to match. So, and then uh, President Clinton says, well, you know, some things don't matter and no one will catch you. If you, you know, if you do it wrong, nobody will know. Uh, but that's, not, both can be invalid sometimes. But, uh, you, but it's just, uh, I have that hanging on the, hanging on the wall there for people to, to and know. So. When, you, uh, when you see interesting cases, I recall that you keep track of them in a in what you call the computer, right? Your my about. my HIPAA non-compliant computer, which I shouldn't admit to on tape, but uh, but in the old days, uh, people we weren't, uh, that out. It's fine. people were not uh, you know, so worried about HIPAA. We had the index card file, which I called my derm path computer, and I collected cases in the index card file, just the numbers, but never the names. And sure. in the old days, if you just put numbers and no names, it was okay. But now the HIPAA police say that you know numbers is an identifier, so you can't even keep slot. You can't really officially keep a list of slide numbers, you know. Uh, so. Uh, you need to get IRB approval for this. <laughs> um, they make research harder now. Uh, definitely, it used to be. that's true. I think it, definitely there are a lot of barriers that we have to deal with now that that were not in the past. Um, you've done a lot of research and written a lot of things over time. What are what's one of the papers that you've written that you are, are the most proud of or feel feel the best about? 
Well, uh, I wrote a paper in around 1990 or so on pitfalls of Mohs surgery. I used to do Mohs surgery and uh -huh. derm path, which people think this. is an, a totally crazy thing, but a lot of Mohs surgery is doing frozen sections yeah, to check the margins. Seems like it makes so sense. And lot, I think the, the thing that the Mohs surgery people do the worst is some of them don't really get the pathology very well. So, uh, so I wrote a paper on pitfalls of Mohs surgery, and it just made people really angry uh, because they didn't, they didn't see any pitfalls. And some people wrote into the letter to the editor and said, you know, the only reason they're pitfalls with Dr. Rapini is because he doesn't understand how to do it properly. And <laughs> We don't have any pitfalls, and he just has pitfalls because he's not oh. doing it properly. So, uh, you know, so there was a, 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 but you know, Madonna once said that you know, publicity, whether it's good or bad, is publicity. So I think that some of these movie stars, they do things antics on, on purpose to, to uh, get people's yeah. attention, and then they know who you are. You know, so I wrote that paper in 1990, and it put me on the map because a lot, of, all the Mohs surgery people knew who I was, and they all hated my guts, and uh, because they hated that paper, and it never gets quoted by anyone in the Mohs surgery circles because they hate it. But, but then they'll write the symbol paper but not give me credit for it you know because they don't want to quote Rapini because I have a bad name in the most surgery circles because of that paper but, so a little, a little uh, I'm proud of that paper though I thought it was what I worked hard on it and I, I made a list of about 15 or uh, or so pitfalls that can happen uh, you know with frozen section control and holes pitfalls in pitfalls are important I mean that's all kinds point. of things that happen pitfalls are pitfalls because you don't mm -hmm. see them right and until, right. until people are aware of them it's, it's dangerous for everybody that's good um, you have I recall also some uh, some pet peeves that you like to bring up at the beginning of the year with new residents. What are some of your pet peeves? Well, I have a pet peeves talk, and I, I know, keep morphing good. it. Uh, it changes over the years, uh, and uh, some years I feel my, like ranting more than other years, but uh, the spelling is one of the pet peeves. Uh, that's kind of a nitpicking thing, but you know, you have to spell Neva Sebaceous correctly and things like, and you know, it, people spell things wrong and it makes you look like you're ignorant. You sure, know? of course. So, and on a pathology, for a derm path person especially, you know, it's, it looks bad on your derm path report if it's spelled wrong. Uh, it looks like, you you know, you don't know what you're doing and, you know, it's just a small thing, but uh, I think it's important. I say Neva Sebaceous with, with no O is the, it's like the code word that I think the derms, I think it's made this way so that they can tell who's savvy and who's not. Oh, they right. put an O in there. No, that's not, that's not right. And pariah you know, if you're uh -huh. going to be a dermatology resident, I always joke they have to learn how to spell paritis properly. It's I. It's not I S. It's U S. <laughs> we should. I want to hear your uh, pet peeves talk again sometime. Um, you wrote a textbook, Practical Dermatopathology. It's a great book. Um, what inspired you to write that book? Well. Um, it was pl slightly pa plagiarized from uh, from uh, people in, at University of Michigan who had a paperback uh, book about some pearls for differential diagnosis, and I give credit actually for it uh, in the in the preface. But actually, the book is so much different now yeah. that it's really not really. Uh, uh, I mean, the book doesn't resemble at all the original uh -huh. item, but uh, but they they had a, uh, they used to have a book of lists uh, of differentials, uh, you know, for so if you see blue things, pink things, uh, you know, little dots, you know, they have a, a differential for for everything. So I so I use that as a model for my chapter one. Of course, uh, I expanded it into 150 lists uh, of differentials. So uh, so you know, when I see plasma cells, I think of a certain thing. If I see neutrophils, I think of something. So I made my lists, you know, and I expanded the list and honed them down and then I added to that by making chapters on the different diseases and then then there's all the cross referencing back and forth that's good what um, advice would you give to trainees or new in practice dermatopathologists as far as career development goes especially in academia if you're in academics or want to be in academics you know what's your advice to the new people well, stick with it uh, and don't give up. Uh, that's kind of a quip, I guess, that people say all the time. But my, my wife tells me that I'm a chairman of dermatology now just because I outlasted everybody and I just hung around. So as a typical faint praise from my wife. But, but I, I, just, I just stuck with it. And uh, there are a lot of people uh, smarter than you. And in medical school, I mean, there was, I was surrounded by really smart people. Oh, yeah. and, and I mean, at this society, there are so many people that are smarter than me. But I, I think I'm more uh, persistent than some of them. And I just stay with things. And actually, a lot of people drop out academics within five years or so. And so if you stay past five years, you're already uh, beat out a lot of the people because they don't, they don't stay there, you know, because they, they can't take it anymore. I, you know, academics, the main problem with it at the university is lack of control of your environment. And that's a very frustrating thing. And you just have to be patient with it. And, it, and it's okay. It, it, the, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. In private practice, you have a lot of control of your environment. But there are other things better in academia. You have the residents and faculty there to, to bounce things off of. So, you know, you have to look at the positive things about it and don't let the 
downside of academia get you down. That's good. Like yeah, like, I think like you said, I, I definitely have uh, felt that struggle early on when you know you see a university policy and you think that doesn't make sense, but there's nothing you can do to change it. But but um, certainly, I guess every job has pros and cons, right? Absolutely. What advice would you give to residents who are interested in? becoming dermatopathologist and, and as far as uh, applying for and getting a fellowship. I mean, that's what everyone wants to know. How do I get a Dermapath fellowship, right? Right. What do you tell, what do you tell these people? Well, write papers. Uh, people right. want to see the publications. I mean, it's too bad it more it turns into that, but that's what people want to see you write some papers. If you write some good papers, not just case reports, that's really good, but also people look at volume so you can pad it with some case reports. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as a, as a, as a and, and you know, just do a good job and, and be yourself when you interview. Um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of people just say that they want to have a fellow who is somebody they can click with, and 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 sit at the microscope with and enjoy uh, being around. That's actually one of the highest things on so, my list. When I look at an applicant, right. I want to know you spend a lot of time with that person for a year, right? You want to know that someone's going to be be comfortable to work with and and have good chemistry. So I think that's important too. Um, why do you? Why are you in the ASDP? Why are you a member of this organization? What What do you think? Uh, the benefits are for you personally. Well, uh, the networking is is a big part of the meeting. You know, and it's the same with the AAD meeting and many other meetings. And networking is something you can do at a meeting that you don't do when you just write papers and and, and talk to people. So so that's big deal. A lot of times I spend more time networking than I do actually attending the meeting, which I shouldn't admit to. But uh, but you know, you like to walk around the posters. You can talk to people. Yeah. Uh, that's really good. Um, so uh, you know that that's that's the main reason I, lo I love the society is 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 to get to interact with all the people that I. And it's really so much fun to match the face with the name. You know, you read the paper and you see their name, and then when you match their face with it, you can talk to them and, and see them in action. Uh, and and the, some of the way people present, it's just, it was always so great in the old days to listen to Winkleman and Ackerman and some of those great people, you know, present things. It was just, they were just larger than life to watch them present yeah. at the podium. Uh, and it was just, you remember what they say more than what you do uh, when you read their books. Yeah, it's uh, it's true. People that are great presenters, it makes a makes an impact. What is uh, what is your favorite skin tumor? Favorite skin tumor. There's a hard question. I will blurt out trichelomoma. Uh, not because it's necessarily my favorite, but it's my secretary's favorite. Uh, because uh, when she, we used to tran dictate and transcribe, and when I said trichelomoma, she got all excited because it thought it was a tricky tumor, so it'd be trichelomoma. But uh, I, I don't know. I, it's hard to pick up favorite. That's the best I just blurt that out because it. it's my secretary's I favorite. I love it. That's a good answer. Ron, thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you.